Compared to other civilizations at the time, where women were completely subordinate to their male counterparts, females of ancient Rome enjoyed meager freedom and power. Although they had some status, Rome did not regard women as equal to men before the law. Their roles in life were subjective based on the class they held within society. Most women received very little, if any, education, but rather they spent a majority of their time looking after the household, spinning thread, and weaving clothing. But their most important task, however, was to bear and raise legitimate children, more specifically strong male warriors. Despite the traditional roles that existed within Roman society, prostitution was legal and rampant throughout. Although women could only have sex with their husbands, men could have sex with whomever they pleased. Thus, prostitution was in high demand. It was not an ideal occupation. Prostitution was looked down upon, but not quite as to the extent that it is in the modern world. But rather, it was more of a social norm. Free, lower-status women may have turned to prostitution simply to make ends meet. With no or little education, it may have been the only available occupation. Others may have done it for rebellion or independence. There were also male prostitutes, although not as well documented. Slaves were also commonly used to fulfill their master's sexual desires. It was not unusual for men to solicit prostitutes. It was actually a common practice, being that it was unaccept unacceptable to have their first time be with their future wife. The need for body contact led them to prostitutes. However, a vast majority of the prostitutes' clientele were soldiers. For one to become a registered prostitute, they would go to the Idol of Public Works where they'd re receive a card with the price that they charged for their services. These individuals worked in a variety of places, but most commonly brothels, then called lupinares. The term comes from the word lupa, which means she-wolf, which is another term for prostitutes. She-wolves could also be found selling themselves outside public gatherings or waiting below arches, in Latin, fornix which is where the English term fornication is derived from. One of the most infamous archaeological sites relating to brothels in ancient Rome is that of Lupinar Africanus, discovered in 1862. Located in the city of Pompeii, which was the center for perverse activity at the time. In each room, there was a bed with a bolster made of brick. There was no evidence of decor and sides, besides an oil lamp which lightened the windowless room. The rooms were closed with the wooden doors or curtains. The entryway to many brothels were also riddled with phallic images as a way to encourage potential customers to enter the brothel. Everything written down today that we have from the Romans was written by men. This makes constructing the lives of women rather difficult. Although, through artifacts such as the fresco watercolor paintings that depict the prostitutes with their clients, sites such as those of Pompeii, and remains such as those of the newborn babies, as prostitutes did not have access to contraception, archaeologists are able to paint a picture of the everyday life of Roman women. Specifically, what is left of the city of Pompeii provides us with the best remains of brothels and gives us insight into the lives of prostitutes.